What's up guys and welcome back. My name is Greg and I'll be your host for today's video. So what we have on the menu for you today is uh, starting with the appetizer, the roof support. So if you can tell this one is meant to go with the sunroof, but we're deleting that so uh, we can also delete that support and replace it with standard supports off of the other car outside. Now for the main course, um, it's composed of two parts. The first part will be the dash beam. So this thing needs to be finished up and made removable. Uh, once that's done, we can attack the firewall. So I have some uh, patch plates already done, ready to be welded in. Just needs to find uh, the right positioning. If you guys are still hungry, we have some desserts and that's uh, what I feel like most of you guys have been waiting for. I've had a lot of questions about it. Um, so we have a really tasty fuel door problem here. Um, if you remember from the quarter panel video, we brought this one out by 100 millimeters. So the fuel filler neck inside here does not line up with the quarter panel anymore. So that one needs to be brought out and mated up with the uh, fuel door and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, that will be at the end. Now, if you guys are still hungry after that, we may have a little digestif as we call it. Um, and if you can see here, we've got the brake lines on the right and the fuel lines on the left, which are both hard lines. And uh, due to the recent voltage, these do not route correctly. They basically interfere with the roll cage um, and there is no really good way to bend them around the roll cage. So what I need to do is completely cut those lines out and replace them with AN lines and uh, proper AN fittings. Now I've ordered those, but I don't know when they'll get here. Um, so if they do before the end of the video, great. If not, it'll be uh, for later. So if you're hungry and you like the menu, stay tuned. Starting off with the roof support, the first thing to do is obviously to remove that factory support that I don't need anymore. Uh, the thing I'm using here is my trusty little spot well drill bit. So I got it off eBay and it holds up perfectly fine. I'm sure you've seen it work in the uh, roof removal video. So I'm going to use it again on this support. Once that's done, I can clean up the entire contact area from the roof skin. So if you can see from uh, removing the roof, we have a bunch of imperfections due to the um, spot welds that were there. So I'm going to clean that up so we have a nice space to work with. Once that's all cleaned up, I can start test fitting the um, other roof supports from the other car. So as you can see, there's three of them because uh, if you don't have a sunroof, you have a big support in the middle and then a small one um, in front and behind it. So a little bit of different setup and I hope it fits uh, with those huge bars from the roll bar, uh, the roll cage. So I'm not sure yet. And if it doesn't, we'll figure something out. Let's do it. All right, so I just got the three supports on here. And as I feared, that middle support actually touches the roll cage right there. So it doesn't fit perfectly yet, uh, but it's not a big deal and it can be fixed. Now, I do want to mention that this is all of my uh, fault in a sense, because I pushed the main hoop as far up as I can inside the car. It's actually touching the frame right here and right there. That's my choice because I'm kind of a tall person. Um, so I wanted to give the people inside the car as much head clearance as they can get. Um, so that's my choice. That's why I'm running into this issue right now. Now, um, as I said, it's not a big deal because the front actually barely clears um, this beam. So only the rear has to be adapted and it's really easily done with uh, just a grinder. Take a few millimeters off of there and this thing will sit um, properly on there. So the reason why I'm keeping those supports uh, is because I'm kind of going with a factory look inside the car. So this thing serves as a bracket, a mounting bracket to hold um, the inside cabin lights. I do want to keep those. That's why I need the beam and the small ones are just there for, um, I guess, vibration reduction and things like that. So just going to be adapting this and then everything should be fine and ready to weld. So 
So I just got done cleaning up the welds. I made sure to grind everything down as flat as possible. So the new roof has a nice surface to stick onto and it prevents from any leaks or any water coming in. Um, so that's all good to go. You can see the cutout again for the roll cage. It seems to work perfectly. Now all three are uh, really solid. I can almost uh, sit on there. So that's the appetizer all done. Now onto the main course. So when you get a new roll cage like this, you get all sorts of tubes and bars, including a new dash beam like this one. And it's all nice and fun until you realize that you have to put all of the original brackets uh, back onto this beam. So everything that holds the dash, the airbags, all the accessories, just basically everything in the center here. And that all has to go back on the beam. Here I have the GD beam on the right and the GC beam on the left. And as you can see, there is a bunch of brackets already welded on the GC beam and nothing on the GD beam. And that's because I've taken them off. They're all cut off. They used to be about the same as on this beam. Now they're not there anymore. They're all already welded onto this new bar. So normally you'd go ahead and weld the roll cage and the dash beam all together and be really happy until you realize that you can't put the original beam back in the car to take those measurements and transfer the brackets over because now you've got a new beam and it's all welded in. So if you've only come to realize that now, you're probably screwed. But if you're like me and you plan things ahead of time, you probably took those measurements before you put in the new dash beam, right? So I've got all my measurements and everything in pictures and written down. So I knew exactly where those brackets went inside the car. Uh, so I didn't need that beam anymore. So that's what I've done now. I've got all my brackets welded in the exact same location as they were beforehand. And I even modified some of them. So like this one, um, I added a stud so I can actually just remove that middle part without removing the beam. Stuff like this. I also adjusted a little bit the position of um, the steering wheel. So it's uh, fitting a little bit better with the GD column. And the airbag, I tried to keep it as close as possible to the original fitment. Had to build a little standoff on the, this bottom piece right there. But overall, I got all of the different brackets um, along the beam. Now the next thing to do is to add these little things. Those are FIA approved uh, joints or couplers for the roll cage. So they can be welded in and it allows you to remove pieces of your roll cage without modifying the structural integrity of it. So I'm gonna put one on either end of the dash beam so I can actually remove it. And uh, let me show you, we have this space right there which is quite tight and that houses the heater box, I believe, and it doesn't fit with the dash beam in there. So I need those in order to remove the dash beam and install the heater box that comes behind it and so I can remove it in case something breaks. So here's a closer look at the couplers themselves. We have two bolts holding the whole thing together. So if I remove the bolts, it's kind of tight. There we go. So it's two halves that are basically identical, except one has little um, inserts in there and that goes right into the other piece, whoops, right there. So it kind of locks together and it doesn't wiggle at all. So it's really secure and apparently it's as strong as if you didn't cut the roll cage in the first place. Now let's get those welded in. The welds are done. I did both the A pillar and those at the same time. So I might have put a little bit too much heat into the metal and distorted the beam. But um, the only way to know for sure will be to remove the beam and see if there is any tension in it. So let's do that right now. Let's take it. So unfortunately, this is exactly what I was talking about. So this side is placed correctly and this side has a one millimeter gap right there. Um, so that's just due to the heat that was in the beam when I welded it. It's not a huge deal. I can just use a set of spanner and then bring the A-pillars together real quick just to put the beam in. So it's still going to work, but in retrospect, I should have welded this piece first, waited for it to cool off and then do the beam um, on top. But it's not a huge deal, it's just one millimeter, so really it doesn't add that much tension in the tubes. And now I can actually 
remove that beam really easily. A few minutes later. All right, so forget what I just said. My OCD kicked in and I decided to redo this. So I carefully cut the tube um, as close as I could get to the weld. So this is the result. And as you can see, there's plenty more room on this piece where I can uh, weld onto and it'll be plenty strong. So all I need to do now is go inside the car, place the beam and then tack it exactly where it should be. And then I should have a perfectly fitting beam. All right, so I got the welds redone all the way around. And let's try this in the car. Boom. Now you can see how everything fits perfectly. Great. Onto the firewall now. So what's going on with the firewall is we have two big holes right there that are meant for the lines going into the heater box that sits about right there in the middle. So what I can do now with the beam off, I can place the heater box in here and then find the right positioning of the lines and the, the grommets that hold the lines inside of the firewall. So I have some plates um, to patch those holes that have the exact same dimension as this grommet. So now all I have to do is place the box in here and then find the right position for my plates. All right, so I've just finished placing the heater box with the dash and all the wiring in here. It all lines up perfectly, even with the new dash beam. So that's all good. Now I have the exact position of where my lines will go from the um, AC here and the coolant on that side. So now what I can do is take my plates that I made earlier and all I have to do is just weld them in in the correct position. However, that's not as easy as it sounds. There isn't a lot of room to weld down here and there's a lot of stuff that could catch on fire. Um, and also the firewall here is made out of three different sheets of metal So I'll have to weld them in together and then tie everything in to the plate that I made I've got one for the AC that I just showed and one right there for the coolant um, So that goes right here You can see the grommet fits perfectly. So as soon as they're cut to the correct size They should be ready to weld and everything should line up great So that should be plenty for now. And that's all I wanted to do on the firewall, so now we can go on to the dessert. The current state with the filler neck is as such, we have the new panel, we have the old bracket of the original car, which goes right in here. But now the issue is the bracket does not line up with the metal anymore and I can't even reach and open the cap anymore. So that's a big issue, I need to bring the inside of the metal flush with the inside of this bracket so that it seals and everything is tight. Now the way to do that is first to attach this bracket to the quarter panels just using four screws. That's easy enough. Once that's done, I need to go in here and cut out the metal around the cap um, so that I can move it closer to the bracket and make it touch the inside there. So that's probably a little bit confusing right now, but um, it'll all make sense once I'm done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start. Now you can really see the problem here. By moving out the panel, we actually created this gap here, uh, which we can fill by using a rubber coupler, or we can just weld a piece of pipe uh, right in between here, which I'm going to do. So I grabbed the other filler neck from my other car, uh, which is a little bit rusty, but I think I can use the top section here. So I'm going to cut it and try to weld it um, in that space over there.
So this is what I had in mind. I've got two pieces of tube right there making the exact bend that I need. Uh, so all I need to do now is clean up the edges, oops, close up some of the gaps and tack them in place. This is our last So I've got the main tube all connected and ready to go. It's all lining up great up here. I've got the cap in there. So the next thing to do is to take care of this breather pipe. It connects to this hose right here. And as you can see, it's not lining up at all. So it's going too far down. I need to either bend it up to line up with the hose or uh, completely cut it and uh, extend the hose to reach uh, right about there. So I'm gonna try and bend it up first. And if it doesn't, I'll just extend the hose. Before removing everything, I actually went in here and got some supports welded onto the metal right there. Uh, that way I can actually remove everything and keep that position um, and I can weld everything shut around it. And that's what I had in mind with welding everything shut. So it's all one piece now. And uh, I think it doesn't look too bad. I've had to go a little bit further out than I wanted to on this side because the filler neck has uh, this little tube on the right side, which extends quite far to the right when once you actually push the tube through here. Um, so yeah, I kind of had to cut the, the support here. Oh, hi. Anyways, had to cut the support here and I'm probably going to tie it back into this piece uh, just to make it nice and strong again. But for now, all I have to do is uh, weld all the seams shut and make it look pretty. I'm just getting late, like you're on a mission. So there we have it. This is officially the final look at my solution to the fuel filler neck problem on wide body cars. Um, so that's what I chose to do. Now, um, I feel like it's a pretty good solution. It's really sturdy. It's going to be durable and um, yeah, it should match up with the quarter panel just fine now. So I'm still going to put the quarter panel back on and check that everything is fine on the outside. Yep, everything still lines up perfectly. So we are done with the filler neck. So the car is back on the ground and I've checked the clearance between the wheel and the filler neck and it's all looking great. So we've got plenty of room and no issues there. I'm really stoked with how everything turned out on this side. Now I don't have enough time in this video to um, do the fuel lines and the brake lines, but I did receive the fuel lines, they're right there. I don't have the, fuel, the brake lines yet. So that's gonna have to wait for the next video. So that's gonna be it for this video, but we still got a lot done and I just wanna thank you guys so much for all the comments and the support you've been showing lately. It's awesome to share something like this with you guys and get the feedback, the questions, you know, being able to help you guys and also get help from you guys. All throughout the build is amazing and I wanna keep it going as far as we can. So I hope you guys stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Come on.